Okay, my dears, today we are going to talk about pronouns. This is like a something that you use a lot in English and sometimes you don't even know that you are using pronouns. Do you know what is that? Do you know what a pronoun is in English? What is that? Or what do you imagine if I say pronouns? For example, let's... Alejo, do you know? Pronombres. <laughs> yeah, pronombres, but what is that? I mean, it is something specific. Can we define pronouns as something specific in English? Tell me, Sarita. Yeah. Um, okay. okay, Sarita and then Alejo. Tell me, Sarita. Uh, they are they are like the ones that are like me, mine, your, you, like them. Okay, the ones that you said are pronouns. Alejo, tell me. They are a pronoun is a word that that is used to um <laughs> signal something without using a name. Uh, common or proprio. Okay. And do we have, do you think that we have just one kind of pronouns? One type of pronouns? According to your experience speaking English? For example, if I say I, uh, no. that's a pronoun. If I say I, is the same thing that, uh, that if I say me? Or if I say mine? Is that the same thing? Or if I say myself? Well... Tell me, Sarita. Myself and I, like, refer to the same thing, but mine, it's like that it, uh, that it belongs to me. Okay. So, yeah, if you realize, I am talking of a personal pronoun that is I. I am just talking about I, that subject. I am talking about myself. Yeah, estoy hablando de mí. But I use I, mine, um, I use me, I, I use a lot. So today we are going to learn a bit about pronouns and different kind of pronouns that we have, okay? Um, I am going to share with you my screen. Uh, there are like... Uh, a lot of kinds, a lot of types of pronouns, but today we are going to be talking just about three. We are going to talk about personal pronouns, possessive pronouns, some adjective too, and reflexive pronouns, just those three. Personal, possessive, and reflexive. So let me put it bigger. Pronouns in English, my dears. Let's begin with this. Jose, can you please help me reading this first slide? I don't see the the, the, the person. Can you see my screen? Okay, I am going to share my screen again. Just to see if you can see it. Okay, Jose, can you see it now? Yes or no, Jose? Yes. Okay, baby, go ahead. Please help me reading this first slide. Introduction to pronouns. Introduction. Purpose of pronouncing the language. The pronouns are responsible for giving the sentence and recognizable character and it can be a personal object. Without your own sentence won't have a protagonist. Thank you. Yeah. So guys, as you can see here, uh, the purpose or the use of pronouncing language is really important because as you were saying at the beginning, the pronouns are then responsible to give a recognizable character, like a characteristic um, to a sentence or to an object, to a person, like to point something, to give a specific things, a specific 
characteristics, specific details of that team that you are talking about, okay? So if you don't have, usually if you don't have those pronouns, your sentence won't, won't have like a sense or you won't have like the protagonist, the main character of that. We have multiple types of pronouns. So, oh my God, give me one second. Okay, so we have multiple types. We have personal pronouns, we have possessive pronouns, reflexive pronouns, recipro uh, reciprocal pronouns, relative pronouns, interrogative pronouns, indefinite pronouns, and well, so on. But today we are going to be focused just in these three, personal, possessive, and reflexive. I know that maybe you, you may be confused with the name, but you are going to realize that you usually use pronouns in your everyday life. Yeah, because when you're speaking English, you are using pronouns, you have to do it. So, let's talk about personal pronouns. Pipe, can you please help me reading this first part, till the part that says pronoun in question mark? Go ahead. Uh, personal pronouns. Personal pronouns are the first category and the most important as personal pronouns are divided in two different subcategories. One subject and uh, two object. Figo? Yes, please. Till this part. Till pronoun. Uh, you may ask why two different subcategories in only type of pronoun? Okay. Uh, personal pronouns, guys, are extremely important, as you can see, because you really use it a lot. A lot is a lot, yeah? So, guys, uh, here you have two categories, subject and object. When you talk about subject pronouns are the common ones, like I, uh, you, he, she, it, like the subjects, you know? The things that we use to talk in every single sentence of English. But when you talk about object pronouns, it's when you are going to talk about uh, this subject by, for example, in this way, me, you, him, her, it, yeah? When you are giving like possession or something like that to the subject, okay? We are going to check this part. In the case of subject pronouns, uh, you won't have change with you and it is going to be exactly the same in singular and in plural. So you can have you in second person or here you. It's exactly the same because you can be two, but you can be ustedes too. Okay? So that's like the same. And here um, it's exactly the same. You is never going to change. Questions about this kind of pronouns? It is not hard, but I'm going to give you some, expl some examples. Do you use this when you when you speak in English? ¿Ustedes creen que usan esto cuando hablan en inglés? Or do you have to English. think like yes, of course. And you are not thinking like, okay, I am going to use a personal pronoun today. No, because it is so natural, it is so normal. When you speak in English, you have to use it, at least these ones. At least subject pronouns, okay? Because you can have verbs, you can have actions without using pronouns. Let's check the next part. Oh, okay. So guys, I am going to talk to you about the word order that you are going to have and I am going to show you both, I mean, personal pronouns in the two categories in just one example. So here we go. Let's check this one. Sarita, can you please help me reading this part? Okay. The English language has a SVO word order, so it means that we need a, a subject and an object to refer to. For example, he, which is the pronoun, but a beautiful bucket, bucket? Of, bucket. of flowers to her pronoun, uh, his, other pronoun, wife, Melissa. So can you see this? Just in this sentence, you have multiple pronouns. So the first one, according to the things that we see, is this a subject pronoun or an object pronoun? He. 
Personal pronoun. Subject. subject pronoun. Very good. This is a subject pronoun. So this is the subject of the action. Okay? So he did something for her. Her, a subject pronoun or an object pronoun? What is that? Subject or object pronoun? Her. Object. That's an object pronoun. Very good. En esta todavía no se fijen because this is another kind of pronoun. That's the reason why it says other pronoun. So guys, if you realize the subject pronoun usually is going to be like the first thing that you are going to find, the one who is doing the action, and the object pronoun is going to, uh, to be the one who is going to complement that action, the one who is going to receive the action. So he bought, um, he bought the flowers to someone else, okay? He did the action, she received the action. Questions up to this point? Okay, let's continue with the next part. Sofia, can you please help me reading this part? Yes, teacher. Go ahead. As you might not said, in the sentence shown, we had to the different pronouns. One, he, uh, he must, must work as the responsible of making the action of buying flowers, so it is a subject pronoun. Um, two, her. Her is the object pronoun that make us now the object of the sentence and the receive receiver of the flower as receiver of the flowers as well. Okay, first of all, sorry, well, we'll... I forgot. I forgot double you here. So had two different pronouns. So I'm so sorry. Uh, but what about here? This is what I was telling you. He is the one to, who do the action, the subject pronoun. Her is the one who received the action, the object pronoun. Let's continue. Give me one moment because my computer is crazy today. Questions about it? No, right? Now let's talk about possessive pronouns. When you talk about possessive pronouns, guys, uh, is when you are going to talk about possession. I mean, the same name is going to tell you that you are talking about possession. We are going to check how to use it, when to use it. Anna, can you please help me reading this part? Señora. Baby, please. in English, uh, can you please help me reading this part? Uh, yes. Uh, passive pronouns. Possessive. A possessive, digo. Go ahead. As the... No sé cómo se dice eso. As the title... As, as the title subject, the possessive, possessive po, pronouns are, pro, are pronouns used to... Um, indicate. Indicate possession okay. toward something is... Um, of someone of someone as well as personal pronouns there are two different categories thank you so guys possessive pronouns basically are used to indicate possession okay possession if you have that in mind you won't get confused and we also have two different categories so the first one the possessive as the terminer we are going to check this part. Um, Sara, can you please help me reading this part, princess? The, like the mm -hmm. sentence? Yes. Um, the positive as the terminate. This pronouns work as the determinate, determinate article of the known day company. In more simple words, let's think they are this object positive. Thank you. Um, Stop uh, for a moment. So thank you. So guys, how are, how is this going to work? In the case of the possessive pronouns as the terminate, um, these are going to be the ones who are going to determinate, like the name says, the article. Okay? So basically, this is going to be the subject who owns the thing, the one who has the things. 
So this is my computer. This is your tablet. This is his hair uh, cell phone. Can you see? So this is the person. This is the subject who has the thing, the one who possesses the thing, the owner. So you have my, your, his, her, its, our, your, or their. If you realize, once again, your is going to be exactly the same. This can be singular or it can be plural, plural too. So you can say, este es tu o este es su o ustedes, okay? Uh, but these are the ones who has the things. Let's see the difference with the possessive as pronoun. Vale, can you please help me reading this part? Uh, to the possessive as pronoun. The second category of possession pronouns can be seen as the director of head uh, object of the sentence because they always go at the end of the sentence. Thank you. So, babies, what is the difference? In the case of a possessive as a pronoun, um, the possessive part, the possessive pronoun, is going to be the object of your sentence. So if you realize, it is similar to the previous one. You are going to have subjects, pronouns, and objects, pronouns. In this case, when you are using possessive as the object, you are going to express also possession, but the pronoun is going to be at the end of the sentence. So instead of saying, uh, this is my cell phone, where you have the pronoun and then the substantive or the or the object or the thing that you are talking about, instead of saying this is my cell phone, you are going to say the cell phone is mine. Este es mi celular, el celular es mío. Can you see the difference between that? So in this one, in the case of determiners, you are going to express possession by talking about the things that you have. And first, you are going to find the, the, the pronoun. Van a encontrar primero el pronoun y luego el objeto del que estás hablando. Y en el caso de los que son, um, de los que son de ese tipo, the possessive as pronoun, like not the terminal part pronoun, you are just going to put it at the end because it is going to be your object. Questions up to this point? The easiest tip that I can give you with this kind of pronouns is that every single time that you find mine, yours, his, hers, its, that is going to be at the end, okay? It is usually at the end. Let's check. Tell me, tell me. Mine, ¿cuándo se ponía el mine y estos? Both, both are to talk about possessions. Con los dos vas a hablar de posesiones. Yeah, when you have something. But the difference is that you have uh, the possessive as the terminer. So is when you have, for example, first this one, first the subject, to say it in that way, and then the thing that the subject has. So we can have some examples. Let's make an example with your Jose. Vamos a hacer un ejemplo. Yo hago uno y tú haces el otro. This is your house. Give me another example by using your as the terminer. Jose. This is your car. This is yeah. your car. Okay. So if you realize you have first the, the possessive, the determiner, and then the object. Están diciendo, esto okay. es suyo. I mean, este, este es mi carro, esta es mi casa, este no sé qué. When you change it into the pronoun, you are going to put yours at the end because that is going to change. The pronoun is going to be your object. So in a state of saying, this is your house, you can say, this house is yours. Can you see that I changed the order? Esta casa es tuya, ¿sí? Uh -huh. Ajá. Yeah. En lugar de decir, esta es tu casa, vas a decir, esta casa es tuya. That's the example that I gave you. Now, I want you to give me the sentence with the example that you gave. You said, this is your car. How can you say exactly the same, but in a, uh, by using possessive as pronoun? How can you do it? Uh, make an example? Yeah, change the example that you, give me, uh, that you gave me. Ah, this car is yours. Very good. This car is yours. 
that is going to be at the end of the sentence, okay? Questions up to this point? It's to indicate possessions. Okay. And now let's talk about reflexive pronouns. Really easy to. In the case of reflexive pronouns, guys, as the name says, what do you understand if I say reflexive? What could it be? Tell me in English. Reflexive. How can you relate it with something? What? Uh, maybe talking about. Uh, I don't. No, talking about. Like about some. I don't know. What to say it. Okay. And who is the other one who is talking? I didn't listen. I am just I am just trying to what do you understand with this word reflexive? What is that? How can you relate it with something? Like when you think in something. When you think in something. Hard for you? Not only hard, but it's yeah, when you think in something, when you're uh, like trying to Reflect on that things, reflexive, a reflection, yeah? So, we are going to check how can we use reflexive pronouns. If you understand the, the link between reflexive and reflection and thinking, it is going to be really easy. So, we are going to check this part. David, can you please help me reading this slide? Uh. Reflexive pronouns. Uh, reflexive pronouns are used when the subject of the sentence and the object of the sentence are the same person. Example. Uh, I, I saw the, I saw it for myself. Thank you. So guys, when you are using reflexive pronouns, is when the subject and the object is exactly the same, okay? So one example, I, this is a, what is this kind of pronoun? I just told you, possessive, personal, subject, object, I, what is this? That kind of pronoun, who can tell me? I is a subject. Yeah, but what kind of pronoun? Personal, possessive? What kind of pronoun is this? Which one? I. Yeah, personal. As you're saying. It's a personal pronoun, okay? And a personal pronoun of the category subject pronoun. And if you realize I, he's saying that, él está diciendo como lo vi por mí mismo. Like, I, I, I assure you that this is true because I saw it for myself. So you have the subject and the object, that is like the one who received the action, the compliment, and so on. It's exactly the same. So in that case, when you have it like this, when it's exactly the same, you are going to use the reflexive pronouns, okay? I am going to show you the list of reflexive pronouns. So, when you have the first person is myself. The, per the first person is I, do you know that? Myself. Who can give me an example by using myself? Who can do it? I did a cake by myself. That's it. I did a cake by myself. The second one, second person, you, yourself. This is singular. You, yourself, singular. Who can give me an example? Another one. So don't forget, the first thing, it is going to be the personal pronoun, you, and at the end of the sentence, you are going to have yourself, the reflexive pronoun. So, who wants to give me an example? Can I? 
Go ahead. <laughs> you have to, to love yourself. Okay, you have to love yourself. Very good. Let's go with the third person. He, she, it. So with he, himself, with she, herself, with it, itself. If you realize it changed a bit, cambia un poquito, so you have to keep it in mind, keep it in mind the changes. So who can give me an example with herself? Who can give me an example with herself? I am going to give you an example with himself and someone else is going to give it to me with herself. So you can say, he fixed the car himself. Listen it again. He fixed the car himself. So how can you give me an example with herself? How could it be? No one. I am going to select someone then. Um, Sophie, can you please give me an example with herself? I guess no. What about Bali? Can you please give me an example with herself, Bali? Uh, she can drive herself or I was it? Algo así, ok. Ella puede manejar, like, por su cuenta, o algo así, ¿ya? Yeah? She can drive herself. Ok, it may work. Uh -huh. Tell me. ¿Me estás llamando? No, I wasn't. And please speak in English. Ok, guys, and there is something interesting here. If you realize with first, second, and third person, the ending of self is like S-E-L-F, like this one. But when you are talking in um when you are talking about more subjects, when you are talking in plural, you have to change this self by selves. The pronunciation is almost the same. La pronunciación es muy similar. But when you write it in plural, you have to change it. Okay? So for example, ourself, yourself, themselves. Okay? So, ourself is we. So, we won uh, the prize by ourselves. Nos ganamos el premio por nosotros mismos. We won the prize. So, if you realize, this is going to change too. In the case of yourself, it's so similar to this one, but this is plural. And themselves, the subject is they. Who can give me an example by using themselves? <coughs> Okay, I am going to select one then. Let me check the list really fast because some of you have been so quiet. Like, Lucas, can you give me an example by using themselves? Um, they say that they are going uh, to do that by themselves. <laughs> okay, <laughs> hey, no, yeah, you got it. That's it. So, reflexive pronouns. The subject and the object are exactly the same. Questions about this kind of pronouns, guys? No questions? So we are going to practice a bit. Uh, this is a box, guys. I am going to send you this box uh, because I consider important that you have it. So here you have it like in a... In a Group way. Here you have a chart with all the pronouns in English, or not all everything, but the ones that we work with today. So don't forget, subject pronouns, object pronouns, possessive adjectives, these ones, possessions, don't forget, possessive pronouns, and reflex, reflexive pronouns. I am going to send this to your email, so for you to have it. And now we are going to have, uh, we are going to practice a bit with some activities. This is the first activity, it's really easy. So you just have to click on a start and the idea is that you are going to move the, the things according to the spaces that you have, okay? 
As soon as you finish, we are just going to check the results. So I am going to send you the, the, the link. That's the first activity. The second activity that we are going to be doing is this one. So here, you are going to complete with the missing word, okay? So once again, you just have to click on the activity, click on a star, and then you are going to have something like this. Later, a space went to the park and play. So you are just going to decide who went to the park and play. Me, him, us, we. How can you complete this one? So as soon as you have it, you can move it. Can you see? Whatever you want. That's the second activity. I am going to explain all the activities in once, just to, in order to make it easier and faster. Then we are going to tell me. No, no. Okay. Then we are going to be working with this one. It's similar to the previous one. It's like a multiple choice. So here you just have to do exactly the same. You just have to click on the one who you think uh, it may work to complete the sentence. And if we have time, we are going to do the next one, just if we have time. So there are some other activities like that one, to complete the missing space, give me one second. And, can you tell me? Can you repeat uh, the last uh, activity? Yeah, it's basically to click on the one that you believe is going to be a, uh, useful to complete this. And just if we have time, because I don't know if we are going to have time, you are going to have time to play with guacamole. So, what are you going to do? The idea is that you are going to hit moles, uh, the correct ones, yeah? So you are going to have pronouns and you are going to have things that are not pronounced at all. So you just have to hit it, yeah? And there are like multiple levels that you have in order to decide which moles are correct and which ones are not correct. So the speed is going to increase according to the level. If you realize this is level number one, so they are, this is going to be super slow. They are going to be there for a lot of time. But uh, according to the levels, a medida que vayan pasando los niveles, se va a empezar a incrementar la velocidad. Okay? So just if we have time, we can play this game. Otherwise, we are just going to play with the with the previous ones. Do you have questions about the activities that we are going to use to practice today? I just trying to change the usual Kahoot, Quizlet, quizzes by something else. So, do you have questions about it? Sí, me qué qué hacer? O sea, puedo repetir, por favor. Yes. Uh, don't forget to use English. We are going to begin practicing with the activities that I just explained. So I am going to send you the links of the activities one by one, according to the time. So I just explained all the activities in just to make it easier and faster. Uh, but I am going to send you these one by one. So the first activity that we are going to do is this one, okay? So there you are just going to organize the pronouns in groups. Go ahead. Do you have Two minutes to do it. Attack. Really, really fast. 